Finally, we've come to the annotations used for relationships. The first one I'll show you is the foreign key annotation. And this one confused me at first. As a matter of fact, both of the relationship annotations confused me at first. So the foreign key annotation is used when you have a foreign key property in your class that doesn't meet code first conventions. So you have to tell it which one to use. And we've already got a great example of that. We haven't looked at the tweet class in a while, so here's a little refresher. It has just a little bit of information, including a property that's a reference property that points back to the alias class. CodeFirst knew that in order to describe this relationship in the database, it needed a foreign key, even though I didn't include one in the class. And it created this foreign key, author underscore author keys. Author comes from the name of the property inside of the tweet class, which is author, and author key comes from the name of the entity key. So that's how it automatically created it. Now let's say we decided to have a foreign key in the tweet class after all. And for most programming scenarios, I actually prefer having the foreign key available to me. So I don't always have to have an instance of that reference property. So I'll add the foreign key, and, and it's an int, and I want to call it author ID. That makes a lot of sense to me. The only problem is I don't have an author ID property anywhere else for code first to figure out that that's my foreign key when I'm talking about the author. So let's see what happens without doing any annotations. I've now rerun the application, which caused code first to regenerate the database. And notice that I still have that foreign key value there, author underscore author key. And I also happen to have a column, just a regular old int column called author ID. So that's not really what I want. I want author ID to be my foreign key. I don't want author underscore author key there. Here's how I fix it. I'll use the foreign key annotation, but here's where my initial confusion was. I thought that I needed to go to the foreign key property and say, this is my foreign key. But that's not how it works. The place to put it is on the reference property. So I put it here. And so what I'm saying is the foreign key for this reference is the property that I called author ID. So now it knows it doesn't need to create its own foreign key for this. It's going to use that. Let's go ahead and rerun this and see the difference in the database. So here's the new tweets table. And I only have the author ID field there now, not the other one that code first thought it needed to create for me because it knew that this is the foreign key property. So everything's set up the way I want it to be. One thing to point out about this is that if I do want to have a foreign key property that doesn't line up with code first convention, the only way I can tell code first that that really is the foreign key is to have this reference property. There's no other way to do it. So I can't just, I can't simply have the author ID and say, hey, this is a foreign key and it points to the alias table and you need to hook it up with the author key property in the alias table in order to build the constraint in the database. You can't do that. You can use only a foreign key, but if the foreign key doesn't match the convention, you, you have to use the reference property along with the foreign key attribute. And if you're thinking, well, maybe for that scenario, I'll use the Fluent API to set that up, the Fluent API won't change that rule. The rule is in the modeling and the mapping. There's no way around that with any kind of configuration.